Hello again, Tubman third graders. It's Miss Deal here. And today we are going to be working on week three, day five of your distance learning work packet. So day five is the last day of this week where you're drafting and publishing your final project. So today you will prepare and present your culminating project using the notes you gathered over the course of this week. So yesterday on day four, you should have chosen one of the three final research projects that you could do um, based on everything we learned. One was a research report, a newsletter, or a pamphlet, or a brochure. Um, so then on day four, you should have used the note catcher to um, write down uh, the evidence from the text that you wanted to use for your project. So I chose the research report, and for that report, I will be writing about sustainable fishing, just that article. Um, and then in the note catcher, I put some quotes from the article that I thought would be useful for my project. So I copied and pasted them here. Um, on day four, you should have also finished um, writing your ideas for your introduction, um, your supporting evidence, and your conclusion. Um, so today for day five, we're going to draft the final project using the line paper or your own materials. And then we'll use the checklist below to edit and revise our work. So I went ahead and wrote my final project down here. Um, this is what I have so far, but using the checklist, we might be able to change it and make it a little bit better. So let's go up and see what we need to do first. I answered each part of the question fully and I used evidence. So I am writing the research paper on sustainable fishing. So I'm going to go ahead and read it and make sure that I answered the question and I used evidence from the text. According to sustainable fishing, newer fishing practices such as purse seining and long lining are harmful to fish in the ocean ecosystem. These new types of fishing catch thousands of fish at once as well as other animals that were not meant to be caught. However, people can help fish populations in two ways. First, by fishing sustainably, like the Tagbano people who catch only what they need. Second, by eating less fish so fish populations can grow. So, I reread what I wrote, and I think that I did answer the question and I used evidence from the text, which is where I got my information. Let's see if I did well in my organization. I grouped similar information together. I think I did that because first I wrote about how current fishing practices are harming fish, and then I wrote about how sustainable fishing and eating less fish can help fish. So I grouped those two areas together. Each part was mostly about one thing that connected to my topic. Yep, they were all connected to the topic of sustainable fishing. I use linking words to help the reader understand. Hmm, let's see if there are any linking words in here. For example, as well is a linking word. It links these two parts of my sentence. These new types of fishing catch thousands of fishes once, as well as other animals that were not meant to be caught. Um, so this, as well as, shows that there is an example after this. So that's an example of a linking word. I wrote an ending that drew conclusions, asked questions, or suggested ways readers might respond. Hmm. I'm not sure if I wrote a very good concluding sentence, so I think I'm going to add one in here. I'm going to start it with the words in conclusion to signal to the reader that my writing is coming to a close. In conclusion, new fishing practices are harmful to the ocean and people need sign to help save the fish. So I wrapped up my writing with a concluding sentence that ties together everything I wrote about, about how fishing practices are harmful and there are ways that people can help save the fish. 
I wrote facts, definitions, details, and observations about my topic. Yep, I definitely included facts about the topic of sustainable fishing. I used expert words to teach readers. I used drawings, captions, or diagrams. I didn't really have room for that in my report, but if you chose one of the other options, you might have included some drawings or other images, but I didn't make any on my computer for this example. I got from it, my information from talking to people, reading books, and from my own experiences. I got my information from reading these two articles and from my own experiences, so yep, you can check that off as well. Finally, let's check the language and conventions. I used capitalization correctly. Let's see, did I use a capital letter to start my sentences? Yeah, I think I did. But I do see a few sentences where there's a capital letter just in the middle somewhere. We don't want to have that either. I shouldn't capitalize just random words. Okay, I wrote simple and complex sentences. Yep, I think so. I use spelling patterns and resources to spell words correctly. Mm -hmm. I use correct punctu punctuation for ending marks, commas, and apostrophes. Everything looks good to me. So I am going to go ahead and check off my last box and publish my final project by presenting it to all of you. So when you're finished with your project, you can present it to someone in your family or at your house, or you could send a picture to your teacher or you could even make a YouTube video of yourself reading your final project. Um, it's up to you. So good luck, third graders, and we'll see you next week.